On this episode, everyone, we are talking about rapport building, trust building, you know, that first little bit of a conversation. And and we're talking specifically around when you're walking in to deal with a prospect. We'll talk about networking another time. But how do you figure out where they are on the spectrum, right? Because if you know where you are, then you got to know if you need a slide, if you need to meet someone halfway or anything else like that. And I'm going to say this is not the funniest episode that we've done, but I think that for most salespeople, you're going to get more actionable takeaways. And listen specifically to the last 15 to 10 minutes. And that's not a gimmick to make you listen to the whole thing, but that's where we go down. Clint talks about specifically, if you're a D, here's how to do it. And Al as the I and how he does it. And, and Nanette is the S and myself as the C, but we've all got different approaches and we all have to think about it in a different way. So that way we can do it and be successful. If you're getting value out of this, please share it with someone else. Leave us a review on however you listen to your podcasts. If you're watching us on YouTube, we appreciate it. Subscribe. And I hope you really enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. In the D corner, we have Clint the Cleaver Bigelow. In the I corner, we have Al the Gambler Daniel. In the S corner, we have Nan the Promoter Foreman. In the C corner, we have John Small Mountain Hill. Let's get ready to throw down! Welcome to the show, everybody. Today, we are talking about how we uncover what the other person across the table is and what their disc profile is, because hopefully... Um, with enough reps and enough practice, you're looking for various clues. And this kind of, we were just arguing about this before the camera came on. And so um, for me, I Did treat this. Did you just tell everyone that we argue? We don't argue. We discuss. Yeah, we're the only group of people that doesn't ever <laughs> argue. Um, and for me, I, because I was saying that my rapport building, trust building, you know, whatever you want to call it, is different in a networking situation or like business development situation versus like an actual prospect conversation. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm really interested to keep going. I want you to keep talking because a C, this should be the most unnatural event for you is mm -hmm. to build True. rapport with somebody, to get personal with somebody, to care about somebody on the spectrum. You're, you're far away from that. Sure. So give us a little insight here on, on a C here doing this. Well, Okay. But before you do that, yeah. if people can see or get the video link, um, Nan is dressed in a wonderful green dress today. Yeah, you look amazing. That Yeah, it's spectacular. And I just wanted to point mm. that out before Aren't we went any further. I, I like to compliment her with my Easter colored pink shirt. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Clint, I, I'm, I'm remiss. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm it's remiss. Man. No, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you two should sit. We should. Actually, Clint, you're yeah. very lovely, darling. Yeah. Yeah, you, you as well. We should start every single segment with Clint, your very lovely darling. Back to okay. bonding and rapport. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> rapport. Uh, rapport building, trust building, whatever you want to call it. So, um, because Clint, you were right. Uh, and you always are. Most likely. No, that's <laughs> not true. Um, <laughs> Just telling that. But it makes him feel better. It's not in my comfort zone. It's not the thing that I enjoy doing the most. And so, before I figured out and learned that if I can figure out who someone else is, and try to slide towards that quadrant. You know, the D needs to be more task oriented. You don't need the details. You don't need to know how the sausage is made versus the S and the I. Let's talk about your team and let's talk about like what's going on in your world and all of these things. The more that I do of that, the more trust I build and the easier the rest of my conversation becomes, right? Now, when I'm networking, right? I go out to a networking event. I grab someone's card. I follow up via email. Hey, would like to get coffee. Talk about if a little bit more about what you do. Tell you a little bit about what I do. So you see if there's any overlap. And then we go and we make coffee or we have coffee. <laughs> meet coffee. Is that like making babies? Sorry. No, it's been a long day. <laughs> make coffee. Um, so that is different to me than someone schedules a call to talk about something and they're a prospect because I'm building a relationship versus I need to qualify this person, understand where they're coming from, build a little bit of trust and then get into my sales process. Right. They're, they're different things because I don't treat these coffee meetings as I need to sell to you. I'm trying to b build and nurture relationships that way you go sell me to everybody, you know. OK, so let's talk about you, you talked about a call mm -hmm. versus an in-person meeting. Absolutely. Two very different um, approaches to having to build bonding 
That's true. Um, and, and noticing things about your customer that you're talking to on the phone is is, is relatively difficult to pick up those things. What, what kind of things are you looking for? So uh, before before we go to there, even if it's an in person in person prospect meeting, right? They've invited me in, and and they're like, "Hey, John, I'd like to talk about what you do." And I go in to meet with them. That's that's still a different process for me than the networking relationship building because I want you to send me referrals and vice versa if I can do so. So, uh, but yes, it is harder even on the phone because you can't see them. You can't pick up on their, on their posture, right? Their body language and things like that. So you got to work a little bit harder. Yeah. So one thing you can pick up on is tonality, speech patterns, speech patterns, um, uh, even to the point where, you know, one of the things we'll probably talk about quite a bit today is what are they talking about? Are they talking in, in love? Are they talking about passion? Are they talking those key words? Mm -hmm. Are they talking facts? Um, those are all great little snippets out of a conversation that you have to kind of write down, jot down while you're on the phone and figure out what quadrant they slide into by those keywords. For sure. Agreed. And there's, there's three other keywords, right? If they're talking about the way that I see it or what yeah. I heard was or how I feel. In my opinion. Right. And so are they visual? Are they yeah. audio or are oh, they yeah, kinesthetic, right? That's right? Because that also helps, right? Because if you're saying, well, the way that I think about this and I thought in this and I'm saying, well, the way that I see it and everything else, I'm not going to build as much rapport and as much trust with you as if I'm using those same words back to you. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And what we would call that is matching and mirroring, right? Matching, yeah. So there's a lot of great, um, man, you can, you can look at some YouTube videos, of, of, for example, of uh, Tony Robbins. He does many segments on matching and mirroring and how you do this. And uh, exactly what John is talking about, using those words back to them, mm-hmm. right? So, in my opinion, okay, great. In your opinion, here's what you – repeat what you said. Repeat it how they said it. Um, you know, if if they use the word like Nan, <coughs> Nan is probably going to use a lot of words like love and passion and, you know, and I can't wait. And everything's so important to her because it's truly something that she loves to do. So, as an S, if you're dealing with an S, you've got to use those words back. Because if I use words like hate and, oh, my gosh, I can't believe somebody would do that, you know, use those big words the opposite direction. You're, you're instantly guiding the conversation in the wrong direction. Absolutely. Right. And then the thing, I don't know if we've talked about this on the air, Clint, but with you and I being task oriented, we're looking at that negative thing because we're looking for how we can improve it. How do we fix the 10%, not the talk about the 90? Great. Absolutely. Right. So. That kind of leads us down that path of if you're dealing with someone, you know, who is people oriented and everything else, like like Al and, and Nanette being the I and the S, you know, they're looking for the good, right? You know, like, like hey, this is great and let's keep this thing going and everything else. But if you ask my opinion, and this, th- this got me not in trouble, but kind of like a bad rap in like corporate situations, right? Because someone's like, hey, John, what, what do you think about this? I'm like, well, I think it's dumb. Mm-hmm. I don't think this is necessary. And they're like, oh, John's not a team player. Yeah. I'm a team player, but you asked my opinion and I'm looking for the way to make this thing yeah. better. Sure. So me and you both deal with that. Situation. Absolutely. Yeah. I just use one word. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't forget. I, I was the guy who wore that word yeah. out. <laughs> the two most overused words, amazing and awesome. Never. Oh, my second favorite word. Amazing and awesome. That's so obnoxious. Well, unless like, it I'm is. Like, quit using it. So other words. But then there are people who do use that word. I mean, it's, I it's apologize. One that can I be just used. think it's there's so only that, one thing that. But is at the same under time, that. if your customer is talking about how awesome he is and how great he is and amazing he is, those are the words you should use back. Absolutely. I mean, I, sure. I believe that you amazing asshat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so. Uh, for the sake of keeping the show shorter than three and a half hours, right? Mm-hmm. Let's good luck with that. Let, let's talk about the networking side of this thing, right? Because we sure. are we're all we're all in a relationship sale. Like no one here sells a transactional one and done kind of thing. Is that God fair? bless you if you do, man. Because mm-hmm. sometimes this whole networking thing gets to be a whooping for know? sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, true. You know, there are some people who are who are more cut out for a very transactional sale, and a lot of people in my quadrant. That's that's me. And a lot of people in, in Clint's quadrant, you know, Clint will kick down any door, but if you have to maintain a relationship longer than what he's expecting, that can go bad a lot of times, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to expand? That was hard. <laughs> but you have like, big, but you have big oh, projects but, that you have to spend a lot of time like, on. Right? I'll be honest. I, I definitely believe in the, the customers for life tradition that when I, I'm not selling you one job, I want to do all of your projects. I really do. 
Um, because if we find a, a winning potion and we're successful on one, I want to be successful on 20 and, and you should be too. Um, where, where it comes in, um, hard for me as a D is, is, uh, finding that winning recipe because I have to care about people. I have to network. I have to do all these things, bonding and rapport. I have to do these things in order to find that winning recipe. So it's not once we've developed it, that's the problem. It's developing it. That is the hard part. And it's not a problem. It's just, it's a hurdle for me versus probably somebody like, uh, Al and Nanette to well, do. Right. Cause you have to work through people you can't just like step into something and it's it clicks you have to work through people well and i i think for, for me i don't like when people feel bad about me or something i've either said or you know maybe something got taken out of context and i think the two guys on the bookends here maybe can move past that a little bit quicker whereas maybe from a, a sensitivity standpoint I'm sensitive to the fact that if we have to discuss something hard, I want to make sure that I'm just not running it down your throat, that, that you know, you're participating in the conversation with me. I don't yeah. mind having a hard conversation with somebody yeah. and saying, Clint or John or Nan, hey, this is difficult for me. I'm I'm not super confrontational. I mean, unless I've been drinking, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, so, Brian, so what that is, and he he's completely accurate. And he lives that in business. He doesn't be us. He, he tells the truth and people respect that. That gets you somewhere. And it it's from the gatekeeper, the first person you meet to the decision maker, decision maker. Sure. When you if you are truthful and you you don't, you know, don't BS people. I mean, it just now you look you you hear that and you think, well, how is Clint going to meet the gatekeeper? There's something genuine. You you actually have a kind heart. You just have to think about doing it harder than we do. That we being the I and the S, Alan. Yeah, yeah I, d I definitely believe that the I and the S in this situation, um, this should be a very natural task to you is to build a rapport with somebody. Because, um, like we said, you're at the you're at that um, bottom half of the quadrant, so you're people oriented. Um, that is a big deal because. Doc, you said something earlier that I'm not afraid to have the hard conversation with somebody. You're right. I, I've seen you do it many times. However, how you do that hard conversation versus how me and John do that conversation, that's where you really see the rapport come in that you've built. So you're able you're to. I see it. Yeah. 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 True. You know, one of the things that I think eyes particularly and, you know, maybe this folds over to an S is we get caught up in these conversations that don't go anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. That we spend too much time and it's non revenue. Yeah. You know, right. It's, that's, it, that's that I task. do think Al yeah. and I do that. I do think that is true. Yeah, it's that people versus task divider. And mm -hmm. and I can and I catch myself at it. I really do. I mean, Got and you. that there's where I'm like, look, we've just blown thirty minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere in this yeah. conversation. And I'm gonna run out of time and they're gonna run out of mm -hmm. time. They're just they're just not gonna stay with it because they're not your cousin Louie, right? And you're not in a bar, you're in a business meeting, you're there to you know, push a project forward or get some more information that would take the next step yeah. for a sales process. And if you're, you know, chit chatting it and using all your valuable time. And I mean, I guess that's one thing as I get older, time is the most valuable component that I have. So I want to use it wisely and it feels good to get to know somebody. And and I mean that genuinely, I like right. to know about people and, and I, I, but, you know, I, I feel like I better understand the person that I'm eventually going to sell sure. to, but shit, I got to get to the sales right. process. Ultimately, you have to have a goal to have a mutual benefit between the salesperson and your prospect and then their success. So you can't just go in there thinking mamby pamby got to have happy, happy, everybody happy. And I hope everybody heard that. That's an S wanting to sing Kumbaya. I just don't want to get in my own way, right? Yeah, I don't right. care if we sing Kumbaya or you tell me no, because I go for the no. How do you balance that, though? Balance, be more specific. How do you how do you balance your natural tendency of being the I? And, and I, I love to tell stories, and I like to, I want to be your best friend, and I, and I want to have a good time, versus... I got to get my shit done, right? We're here for your a goal, purpose. your mutual benefit. I will say money. 
Well, it's because it's part of the process, and I could get bogged down on the first section, bonding and rapport, and use all my valuable time doing that Mm -hmm. and walk away with not enough time to get to the rest of the process. Or I can give that, I can be expeditious with my time about getting to know somebody, asking them some relevant questions, and knowing once we get the yes, I can talk to them all the time about themselves, right? I've got, you know, that now it's on my side to where I can call up and say, hey, John, you know, how's that kiddo of yours doing? Are they starting kindergarten today? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah, well, cool. Yeah, I remember those days. Remember? So I chatted up that way because I know now we have an ongoing relationship because you've said yes to the project. Have you gotten better at that over time? Absolutely. Because I, I, everyone will. You get I am better. Shocked. Okay, sure. I'm shocked that I ever sold anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that I, I'm not like I don't have a coin purse because I'm trying to figure out how to spend my last five cents. <laughs> or you know I got a little bit of money left because I've blown it all. You know bonding and rapport. How does that? How does that improve though? Like 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 what? Do you measure that? Is it? Uh, is it just like setting expectations around like, hey, like this meeting might run a little bit longer, you know, should we go ahead and switch gears? Like, like, how do you, are, are you, when you're sitting at the table, right? And you're, and you're having that first meeting and like, are you aware that you're spending too much time or do you just look down and you're like, oh shit, it's 25 minutes into the hour. Good question. In the beginning, I wasn't aware. You know, I was just babbling and we we're just mm-hmm. chatting it up and then they were having to go. <laughs> they had to get up like, and I hadn't ah, even really had a, a sales conversation. I'm like, okay, well, you know, we'll talk soon. Yeah. And I'm like walking <laughs> to the parking lot going, that, did, <laughs> that was fun, but, yeah. you know, I just wasted an hour of my time. But but in the beginning, though, it's it's easy to leave those meetings and think, man, oh, man, man, I just had a great conversation. Did all of that, yeah. right? The, yeah. These guys are going to buy from us forever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They love and then I, I come back in, and the receptionist to be like, I'm, "Who are you again?" Yeah, you know, so you started <laughs> all over again, you know, and hopefully you didn't let it go stale by letting too much time go by, mm-hmm. right? Whereas if you'll get an engagement off of you, you know, you go from your bonding and rapport, and you you feel like you 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 now move into a a portion of the sales conversation, yeah then you've, you know, you, you've, you've got a reason to go back, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas if you just chatted about kids, they're like, oh, we had social hour. Thank you very much. Why are we talking again? Oh, we got to sure. start all this all mm-hmm. over again. They know your kids' oh, names, but they have no idea what you're saying. They, yeah, they know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, yeah, they've not seen anything actionable because you didn't get to the action point. So, Nan, as the S, like, do you, do you see yourself improving with that? Like, what was that process to get better and make sure that you're spending your time well versus just yeah being... so in the beginning you know you think just what kind of what al said that you think everyone loves you and they want to talk to you and you've got the sale well you don't have the sale if you don't actually tell them what you're selling and what you're bringing to the table and how it can be advantageous to them yes sir well, I was going to say, I'll put up his finger. The, the only reason I say eye. that is because I, I think you fell back into features and benefits, which I know we don't do. We look for what problem does this individual have and, mm-hmm. and how are we solve it. And I know Nan does that because I've seen her do it. So I don't want people to get the wrong impression that you're just going to go vomit on these people. No, I, well, I, I was saying initially that was what I did, and then oh, okay. when I'm it sorry, wasn't, that's right. And then when it wasn't working, then I went, oh, "Okay, wait a minute. There, there's a different process to get to the goal to succeed, and you learn that over time. But we're trying to prevent you from having to do what we all did in the beginning. That's the whole. We're, yeah. we're, that's our goal that's why we're here. with this is that we want to show you, oh, okay, this doesn't work. It doesn't work to just be buddies with your neurosurgeon. They don't care. They, I mean, they might care, but they don't care about your product if you don't show them the benefit of that, but not by throwing up on them all the benefits of that. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, let's set this, let's set a little scenario here because I think that the S and the I and the C and the D would would change gears in this this pattern a little bit. So, if you're sitting in a conference room and you're chatting about kids and you know what you do on the weekend, that rapport that we're talking about, you're getting to know things. One thing that a D and a C will do if it gets too long, we'll cut it off. Right. One of the things that we do bad in that regard is we do it too harsh. Oh, yeah. we, we've ruined the rapport by saying things like, okay, anyway, back on task. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we say those harsh things to get back on task and it really ruins Never everything. Never said by Al. It's and like, I, 
<clears throat> it's it's like when you're driving that like old car and the clutch is going out, you know, and you can't really get into gear and you're just grinding, you know. I mean, I mean, it's not a smooth <laughs> yeah. process. That's, I mean, yeah. I have had some rough transitions sure. away from, hey, let's let's chat a little bit, yep. let, you know. And uh, to to your earlier point, right? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out where you are, yep. right? Are are you someone like Al? Are you someone like yep. Nanette? Are you someone like you? Are you someone like me? Mm-hmm. Because once again, I'm trying to figure that out. And as soon as I know that, and it's a prospect meeting. I'm going to move forward with like setting expectations about why I'm there and what I'm hoping to cover. So when you meet somebody like you, do you guys like trade spreadsheets and stuff? (laughs) Yes. Do you, you're like, pocket protectors? Bro, show, I I got, have you seen this? Yeah. Well, what's really interesting is that in, in my last role as, you know, a web design agency, I didn't deal with a lot of people like me, right? Because like I was dealing with the entrepreneur, right? You, you. Probably the creative side too, right? What do you mean? I'm sorry. Like the creative mindset, the artistic side? Not not as much as you would think, honestly. It was a lot of people like Al, right? The visionary, right? Right. I've you, got big goals and big hopes, and I want to talk to someone, and you can build me a website, and <laughs> and you guys are the affordable guys? Hell yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> um, and, and now, right, I still kind of talk to those people, right? Um, talk to sales managers and owners, and typically those are not C's. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the outlier as the as the entrepreneur who is a C. I mean, it, I mean, it, it just doesn't happen very often because you got to go talk to a ton of people and be a salesperson. Right. Unless you're like an accountant or something like that. But I, yeah, I get where when you but you bring structure to ideas. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what a C does. I'm going to give you a T-shirt for a, my company. Which you may is not a win. Like <laughs> yes. ding, 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 ding. And that's a win. That's a win in my book when somebody like you says, oh, okay, yeah, I get what you're saying, mm-hmm. which is the bonding and rapport. So now I'm uh, buying in. Yeah. yeah. My how, favorite question is, how do you measure that? Yeah. So and everyone's like, uh, huh? Okay. So here <laughs> it's too small. Exactly. <laughs> I just stare at it. <laughs> To, to go, to go. I don't want to. I don't want to cry, man. I just came to look. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You need. Now, what were you saying? <laughs> so there's a way that John has to do that now that you guys have built, you know, rapport, and now you've you've got the idea, John. Mm-hmm. You know, Doc's this big visionary. He's got this big idea. Now you have to bring facts to the table and maybe maybe even crush his dream, right? But you have Sometimes, to. Do, yeah. But you have to do it in a manner. The, and this is, you have to recognize who's across from you. So hold on. That's a whole other episode, though. It, it honestly is, okay. right? Like like illuminating concerns and, and, okay. and potential pain points and things but, like that. But hear me that's, out for, that's hear me out for just a second. So okay. what I was saying earlier is the C&D will transition that. Let's get this task done today. Mm-hmm. And they'll do it harshly. One thing that we can take out of the playbook of an I and an S is to say things like, oh, my gosh, we've been chatting all day. Oh, we need absolutely. to. Uh, you, because you see what I'm saying? So it's it's a very different. It it's a very different transition in a task. How mm-hmm. hard is it for you? And now I know because you. I'm even, a pretty social guy. I like right. I like the Me report too. side. So so I don't have any problem with the report, but I do get to the yawning stage of like, okay, I've heard about this uh, your cute cat for a little too long. Like we got to get going on. You here. don't like cats? No. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So I'm you a social person tell. with with people that I that I enjoy hanging out with. The average prospect, I'm not. This is going to sound so harsh. <laughs> oh, quit running! I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, don't run with those scissors, man. Do, I, don't do it. I'm not. I'm not there to build a relationship like like us three have relationships, or or, or the four of us, or like my close friends, right? So. And the thing about it is, is I struggled with it for so time because it felt forced and I felt fake and inauthentic. So if you're a C and you're struggling with this, jot this down put a task behind it because once I figured out, I'm just trying to figure out this one thing and then I can move on to the rest of it. Because if I'm talking to Al, then I'm going to ramp it up a little bit, right? I'll talk about, Oh man, that's awesome. And one thing that I love to do as much as I hate being wrong is I will fall on the sword. And so if I'm talking to someone like Al and I I mean, I could talk about this all day long, right? And I love this, you know, but should we spend some time talking about like why why we're here today? <laughs> well, okay, and you're being polite because yeah. you are a little more <laughs> direct. direct. Uh, hey, and and I know it because we built that rapport that allows you to say that to me, and then yes, we move exactly. on. That there, yeah. there's the key issue yeah. because I know you give your time to charities, and I've seen you at social networks, and I've seen you introduce me to other people, and you do it in a. I mean, it's not an awkward way. So it, it, you have a presence that's different than mine that really works in certain arenas because you're the perfect person to put a benefit together. Right. But if you're on, if you're on the other side of the one way glass, Oh man, I'm, I'm just like, how does this benefit me? 
How yeah. does this benefit me? Right. Yeah. Not, not the charity work, but you know, uh, I make a lot of introductions among people that I know. And the reason why that started is because when I started out in the website world, um, my partner knew everybody. We'd go to a coffee shop and every other person would come in and be like, Hey man, how's it going? And he, knew, and I was, yeah. and I was just in awe because he knew everybody. It's like, man, I want to be that person. It's like, Oh, you, you'll get there eventually. And I'm like, no, this is never going to happen for me. Like, I'm just not this person. And then what, when it came to like asking for referrals and introductions, I felt uncomfortable because I didn't really feel like I knew anybody. So then I just set a trap for myself every week. I was not leaving the office until I made at least five introductions. And it wasn't always for, like business needs, but sometimes it was like, Hey, you're cool. And you're cool. You guys should go have a beer because you both enjoy this one thing that I uncovered in our networking. So I then kind of became this guy who you wanted to have coffee with because I was going to open up my, my book and, you know, make some introductions happen. Look at you, the digital godfather. <laughs> and no, I mean, it's kind of the karmic loop of networking, right? Yeah. You know, if I give out enough, right. By the rule of reciprocity, which we're all kind of hardwired by, you're going to feel, you know, you're going to want to give uh, referrals and introductions back to me eventually. Sure. Or if I show up and say, Hey, I, w- I went through your neck. I went through your LinkedIn. You know, I, I saw a couple of people. Would you mind making an introduction? Mm-hmm. You're going to, f- you're going to say yes, because I, I've already introduced you to like seven or eight people in, in most cases. True. Hmm. Sorry, we got a little off topic there. Yeah, you did. So talking rapport, rapport. this styles, how styles. to recognize for sure. Who's across from the table? Who are you as a person? How do you, Let's start with Nanette. How do you do that? What's your first step into looking across the table, seeing a person? What do you start looking at as a character? How, what do you start building in your well, head of who that thing, person is? The first thing I always do is I look at their demeanor when I'm walking in. So if they're stressed or there's always so everyone. Physical, physical stuff. Right, just the demeanor that's going on in the room and with that person. And then I ask questions, a genuine question not i don't go in with a i'm gonna ask this question to whoever it is whatever they're doing i think i look at them and go oh she probably has kids and then i ask them do they have kids people want to be known and want they want a truthful statement about them they want to share and i think a huge failure across the board professionally personally is we go even to the grocery store. We all go to the grocery store. We talked about this a little bit last week that, or the last one, but um, that, you know, you go into the grocery store and you just act like everyone's doing the same thing and nobody really cares about anybody. Well, nobody cares. Everyone does. Probably they are in their own little bubble, but if you, you can pull stuff out of people and that means a lot to them. So if you go do that professionally and you genuinely want to know, do you have kids? Do you, I mean, think of something that, you know, and if they were like, no, and like, oh, okay, well, you know, then just ask them another question. I know that sounds probably really silly to a D, but it really matters to people. I believe that. I think you can influence people if they're an introvert or not. I mean, to you can pull a positive out of someone if you give them a positive. Clinton gave you the hardest look in the middle of that thing, and I can't wait to hear what he was thinking. Well, he, he probably wants to throw up on me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I just, uh, you know, as a as a pretty high D, I, I <laughs> don't think everybody cares. That's that's my opinion. Some people just want to get to work, right? I I don't, me personally, I give a shit less if you ask me how, about my kids and my day. I, it's my personal wow. information that I'm not. I can't really, even get my head wrapped around that, but I'm working it. on it. Right. But so, so what a great um, way to look at an S to a D, mm-hmm. right? So Excellent. as an S across from a guy like myself at a table, you ask me enough of those questions, I'll answer a few of them. There's probably going to be some personal information that I'm, I'm sketchy on on why you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. So, so okay. be, because you get sold to a lot, right? So, so this is a really interesting, Correct. how do you deal with it with, how do you deal with it whenever a uh, vendor or rep or someone c- comes in your office and wants to build bonding rapport with you. I just shut it down. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so I, look, some of my surgeons are D's for sure. Not all of them. And I will tell you, I don't do that with them. So good point. I'm go. glad you brought that up. Okay. Thank you. So with a D, so in most cases you can go to it, you can definitely go to an I. They're like, 
They want to tell you everything. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Do we have enough time? <laughs> exactly. And a C. Even Let's order in lunch. I think C's <laughs> want to share as well. They don't want to go into depth. They just want to, yeah, you know, they'll share a couple little things about themselves. Now, a D, I, and you can identify that because look at, I mean, you can look at us huh? if you, if y'all are able to see us um, visually yeah. <laughs> 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 then you you know how how our d is clan is just irritated easily by just silliness like me so then he you see that person and what are you going to do you're going to back off and you're going to be calm very quiet you're not going to like just be in their face but you're still going to ask them a personal question i mean i'm not I'm not going to just get straight to it. So you're saying that's going to irritate you. Hold on real quick, though. For all the S's out there, right? Yeah. You're you're not silly, right? Like, like, like that's dismissive of... Oh, I, that's true. I don't think I'm silly. Right? I think and I'm wonderful. If, if I think in, the D's that are irritated by the S's are silly. But, but this <laughs> but is an important well. point, right? Because, like, that's why we're all here, right? right you don't have right. to... You don't have to not be you and not be the S when right. you're when you're selling and networking and having sales conversations. You just have to be aware of like how much Absolutely. S you are putting out there, right? Because it might not be benefiting you at the time. Let's back up. Okay, I'm gonna back us up again because one of the things that I'm really curious about in this is how do you recognize not how you sell to them, not how you deal with them, but how do you recognize what profile? the person is across the table from you, right? What do you do to kind of um, bring that out of them? You started talking about asking personal questions. Right. And and look, you can get a lot of right up front answers. If you start asking personal questions and people pull back, you start realizing that they're not, they're not, they're not, a, an they're S, not they're in not it for people. I, right. right? So, so that deducts two out of the four. Okay. Right? Well, I would like to know if I am coming up, to you at a table, first time we've ever met, what do you, what, what are you comfortable with? You know, Clint? what's the first question that you ask people, right? You know, when you're networking and, or uh, I'm sorry, calling on a prospect to talk about business because, because we'll talk about networking another time. Um, I don't know. That's kind of a, a loaded question a little bit. Let's, let's just say this. If I know nothing about the person sitting across from me at a table, um, doesn't matter the setting. I use my tools. I'm I'm direct. I, I'm very deliberate. I want to know the answer, so I'm going to ask the question. How do you deal? Are are you a are you a fact factual person? You ask that? Yeah. Why not? I'm direct. That's that's mm -hmm. who I am. Oh, wow. I mean that. But why not? Makes sense. Sure. I'm, if I'm sitting across from a guy that I've never met before, I'm like, hey man, I'm just trying to get to know you. Are you a man? Do you like? So when I put this bid together, how do you want this? Do you want this in factual form? Do you want to talk about? Um, do you want to talk about the quality? What do you want to talk about here? Okay. I'm pretty upfront. Do you, think, like, do you think that changes it in a different industry that is not so bid based? Yeah, maybe. Um, I still do that. I don't think it does. But I still do that at the at, when I'm meeting somebody new for the first time in a bar. Yeah, I mean, if you're a car salesman, right? What do you like to see in a car? What are you looking for, right? That that direct approach to tell me a little bit about why we're sitting here I've okay heard. so okay, okay so this brings up a, a super important point right because um i've had a conversation with someone who's having a bad day yeah. and i'm like oh man this guy's a d and then they're not a d, not a d. they're just having a shitty day and everyone's allowed to do that sure. right so Absolutely. you have to be constantly evaluating um are, Agree. is are You're, you right you asked me my first question sure right? no absolutely right but that's that's a discovery question maybe I'm, that's what I'm trying to do is discover who I'm I'm dealing with. But I think a D's bad day is different than an I's bad day. That's different than an S's bad I'm day. I'm not talking so to you if I'm having a bad day. I'm not even talking. Right? Because if you're because Al, if you're under the gun for time, right? Let's not say that you're having a bad day. Let's just say that I catch you at a bad time, or you forgot that you double booked yourself, mm -hmm. right? And I call say, hey, Al, you know we we agreed to meet. You know, and then I don't do a good job around setting setting expectations around time, right? So now you're pissed off because you know you have this other thing coming up and you want to get rid of me and everything else. And I'm like, how's your day going? Good. I'm like, okay. Mm. 
You know, yeah. I, I'm I'm beginning to formulate an opinion. It, it wasn't well, but, awesome. So, but wait a second, you you <laughs> you do that because you know me, and I think yeah. that what happens is when somebody says one word, if you're listening, you're looking for that next clue to dig a little bit deeper about. Okay, I get it. Something's not right here, or this isn't the most pleasant conversation I've had. So, am I? Is it? You know, where's the issue? Is it because the guy's a jerk? Mm -hmm. You know, or is it because he's pressed for time? But there's there's when you go to work. Sure. No, I agree. But we can be wrong. Right. You know, you you, you can catch someone on a bad day. So you got to be reevaluating that throughout the course of the conversation. So. But if you're so self-absorbed that you're not recognizing that this isn't going so well for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. good day, bad day. The guy's not connecting with me or I'm sensing that I need to ask the right question, and and that sounds ambiguous, but I, yeah. I think when you sit there and you look at somebody and you if they're a C, then you begin to hone in on how do I get around this awkwardness of our initial discussion so that I get to a deeper level. Do you call that out in your conversations? Sometimes, but not all the time, <laughs> right? Do you have to have like a certain amount of rapport w- w- with someone before no, you say? No, because I'm building it. I'm. This is a. Okay. This is a first. You know, yeah, we, we just sat that's down, fair. so I'm not assuming anything. But I will say, so you know, and, and, and kind of hard sitting here just at the mic. But they'll give me a clue. I've, I've said this over and over what, again. What kind of clue? If something will. The they will give There's a hint a as to it's. It's almost like foreshadowing in literature, right? I'll I'll, I'll feel that hint, and I and, and if you're too involved with yourself or your nerves or where you are, then you're going to miss it. Sure, but There's if you pick it up, a clue. that is so true. You're going to get. You're going to. You know. You're going to pick up the ball, and you're going to be able to run with it. Yeah. And then you know which direction to go, and you and you go because with it. you can say to somebody that, wow, you know, kind of a hard task running the division that you run. You know, um, tell me a little bit about some of the challenges you face. I mean, if that's an okay question to ask, can you tell me a little bit more about that? If you get a little head knob or a little, okay, we're because a lot of times if somebody's upset about something, it may not have anything to do with what's going on in your world, right? Meaning your little conversation you're having. Mm-hmm. So if you can get them to just move into the task, you know, they know they've you know, they booked you for 30 minutes. Let's just go with it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of physical snap judgments that you can make. I'll be honest. There's a, so many times that I look at somebody from across the room and I say, that guy's an I, that guy's a C and I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. I, I will tell you that you can't really deduct who somebody is without asking questions Agreed. to them, wh- whatever those questions may be Can to I see their questions? answers, to see their, what do you, what, what are you thinking? Go ahead and finish your thought. Well, I'm saying there's got to be a little bit more than just, um, okay, this guy stands a certain way okay, and, yeah. and he answered that question in this class a certain way or he stood up in front of people and he's comfortable because we all have little bits of trait. And don't forget, we all have a secondary uh, sure. personality, mm-hmm. right? So we're maybe a, a DI who's very comfortable in social city situations, but can be task driven. Correct. You have You have... SCs, right? That are test driven, but they love people. So you got to be careful about making snap judgments. What I'm saying is that until you get in those conversations and sit down and start asking some some questions, that's when you need to develop. But okay, so you brought up a good point. What are you smiling about? You you don't have though a DS, right? You can't. Yeah, Yeah, my wife's one. Okay, you know three that I can think of off the top of my head, actually. Well, then I just need to quit. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, guys. <laughs> okay, John, I'll well, stop talking. <laughs> uh, no, that's not what I'm saying, though. Is it, I mean, it's not normal, right? I mean, you, you don't see people crossed that hard very often, right? Uh, we, we just happen to know a lot of the same people, and you just happen to know a couple of them, right, that, that I can say. But uh, I'm smiling because the lines of my sales process are drawn so hard in the sand, whereas I think it gets very, very muddled as we go further this way along the table. Look at you, man. Well, but then how do you adapt to different scenarios with the same individual? Because my, so when I'm trying to build rapport, or and trying to bond with someone it's i'm not uh i'm not jumping the gun and 
I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way saying saying that that I'm right and you're wrong, but this is just how I think about this. I'll ask a question of like, how long have you been doing this? You know, is this what you always wanted to do? You know, and those kinds of questions, because to me, that's rapport building. But the minute that I start talking about, hey, you know, what kind of questions or concerns or can I tell you about some of the other things that other people tell me? That is discovery, right? Like, like that's that's looking for concerns or, you know, trying to find okay. pain or something along those ways. Right. So in my world, and this is going to be crazy to you guys, if I don't know your disc profile, I am incredibly uncomfortable moving to my setting expectations and then and then moving yeah. into discovery and trying to find pain. Oh, yeah, that doesn't bother me. Well, at all. but how long does it take because you, you can to f- it. how long does it take you to figure out somebody's disc profile? Oh, like mm, may, maybe four or five questions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's so, a quick process. Okay. So, so very quick. Speak to that real quick because content here, what are those sure. f- four questions? What, how, what what are you talking about? My first one is like how's your day today? And I, and I and I don't mean it and I, and I say it uh, one of my one of my biggest things that I am constantly working on is my tone because uh, I don't know if we talked about this, but I I, I grew up with this attacking. You got to correct. I, I'm not attacking, right? And I I think a lot about tone because I know that I'm a C, right? And I know that le- left to my own devices, I'm going to talk very quick and very monotone, and I don't really care about anything else. And this is just how I'm going to talk to everybody, right? This is not a great sales conversation for anybody. I have to slow down. I got to build some empathy. So like, how's it going today? You know, and I will. I will ramp it up a little bit, right? It's not comfortable. I feel a little fake, but I'm doing it for a reason. So when the guy leans back and goes, you asked that for a reason. That doesn't, that, but. It never comes out, I understand. That (laughs) that never happens, right? (laughs) I just wonder, never would if you asked me. But here's the deal. (laughs) Um, But how you answer that a lot of times informs the the next Mm -hmm. thing. Right, yeah. because I'm. Con- I'm so uh, let's just say this guy, every gal, says says it fucking sucks today. Man, what's your next? Well, okay, so I'm trying to role play a little wow. bit here, so Ask we can get why. some, some yeah. content. Man, I'm super sorry to hear that. Exactly. There you go. So what, a little what's little sympathy. Going on? Oh, yeah. empathy, right? Right. Which is once again not in the C's tool chest, mm-hmm. right? I've I I have to borrow from you know the S and the and, and the I to do that, but. I genuinely want to know because here's the deal. If your day that sucks that fucking bad, we should probably reschedule this call. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Right? Because mm-hmm. one of the things that's super easy to be jaded around this idea of, man, this guy was an okay. asshole or man, this guy missed my call. Sometimes shit happens. You, you, you brought up a good point. So if you said, hey, man, it's really, if it's that bad, you know, is there another time that empathy that, um, you know, actual having feelings for someone? Mm-hmm. If you say, look, man, if, if you're having a bad day, maybe we can reschedule this until a day is better. And he says, no, I'm good. Let's get this done. You just put him at the top of the spectrum on the C and the D task oriented. Oh, for sure. You right? see what I'm saying? So there's so there's discovery is what you're talking about. Those questions that you ask once somebody says something like that. That's how we're putting these people in these corners. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Right. Because I, depending upon the vibe I get. Like, hey, wh- what happened? Is everybody okay? I'll, I'll kind of put two questions in there. And the reason why I'm asking two questions is because the I and the S are going to be like, yeah, everything's good. This is what happened. And then they start to monologue about why they're in the good mood versus the bad mood or what right. is going on. And this is further pinpointing me towards where they are in the thing. Right. The D, no, I'm good. Let's go. Yep. Okay, cool. You don't want to share this shit with me. I don't really, I don't want to share anything with yeah, you. Because the C let's would actually probably answer, you know what, this uh, there would be a better day. Let's do this tomorrow or let's do this next week. Or or they're going to talk about like some facts. Yeah. Right? It's like the reason why they're the reason why they're angry and it's never going to be a relationship thing. Sure. Oh, the system sucks. Yep. True. Right? That's why I'm angry. The system sucks, so I'm angry. Absolutely. Today. Right? Or man, I I can't I can't communicate this stuff because they're just not listening to me, you know, and, th- and things like that. So it, it's a it's not a science. It's more of an art, right? You got to be able to pick out like little, little bitty nuggets in what they're saying to you and then let that inform because I can't keep pushing someone like you. Right. Whereas I can nurture and draw out more around someone who's like Al, who's an I and Annette, who's an S. They want to share that stuff. I feel so weak when you say that. What? <laughs> That, yeah, so. that you're able to game me a whole lot. I mean, no. it, which is not, not game. Don't get me wrong. That... It, and, and I, I like hearing this because it is revealing when you stop and, and break it into the little segments you mm-hmm. just broke it into. Because the, because the thing to remember is you need to trust me to do business with me more than Clint needs to trust me to do business with me. As long as I can as long as I can show a D like Clint ROI, 
Let's fucking go. Yeah. Right. Whereas you, you need to know that I'm going to be good for you. And if I'm going to have any interaction with the rest of your team, that's got to be a good fit and things like that. So that level of trust has got to be cultivated more than someone who's a C or someone who's a D because it just has to make business sense. Sure. In in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. But that, those are the kind of things that I'm trying to pinpoint. Right. So that way, you know, when I'm setting expectations of like, okay, how do we make this the best use of your time today? Which is how I'd say it to someone like Clint versus like Nanette and Al of like, Hey, is it okay if we get on the same page about why we're here today? Right. Clint hates it. Yeah. When, I mean, when, no, you're, you're hitting some good points here because you're asking the same question. Mm-hmm. You're saying it in two totally different manners and they speak to one end of the spectrum versus the other, the top half or the bottom half, because in this report, that's what you're going to find is people orientation versus yep. task orientation. This is where that horizontal line really comes into play. Absolutely. Am I talking to people or am I talking to task? And you got to stay on one point versus the other throughout the conversation. Particularly when you recognize who you're speaking That's to. That's what I'm saying. Right. So yeah. once you realize that, now, stay you, with get, it. Yeah. now you get to stay, stay with it. Stay with it. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. One, now, if you've made a mistake, like you say, you've you've picked the wrong avenue, mm-hmm. just quickly change okay. avenues. For sure. Yeah, yeah okay. it's easy to do and you can, because you'll, you'll feel you them slipping away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. You don't well, cut bait. Yeah. But look, if if you feel not to, if you feel that you've kind of maybe even ruined a relationship a little bit by being in the wrong quadrant, um, a little bit, it's okay to admit that. Oh, that's what I was say. Reach so, out and say, "Hey, I might have misunderstood man, this." I, I really, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I I made a mistake here. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me. This is really awesome, right? Because Clint is falling on the sword here. Yeah, right. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often, and it doesn't happen very often for me either because I don't like being wrong, mm-hmm. right? But I will do it in front of a prospect because it. It it furthers the cause. Oh, absolutely. Well, you're right? being truthful. You're I not- will I will I will go over and above. Hey, I did a bad job, right? I, I made an assumption here. That, that's my fault. I I thought I heard you say something else. Can we back up? Yeah. And Clint will do the same thing, but that's harder for a D it and is. it's harder for a C than it is for someone who is like Nanette and Al who are the I and the S and they're and they're below that vertical line and they're and they're people driven. So I want to tell you that the, the who you're dealing with is only fifty percent of the equation. Because me falling on the sword can be easy on Monday and not so easy on Tuesday. So depending on what emotional state I'm in, what day I've had. So you have to check that too. You have to understand that I'm in this mental state and I'm about to go approach a D. And for me to fall on a sword on a on a bad day is going to be tough because it's easily to say, uh, F it, done with this situation. And you just ruined a relationship. You just ruined some rapport because you're having a bad day. So there is a neutral state of mind mm-hmm. that you have to go into every situation with. Before you you dive deep into it, there's actually a uh, if, if you're doing a lot of LinkedIn prospecting, there's this great tool, and what it what it will do is you can turn it on, and it'll tell you based upon how they talk about themselves and and the and the types of things that they post, right? So it'll kind of give you some insight about who they are, and so then if you go and you write that person an email, especially if you're in Gmail, it'll say, "Hey, be short, be insightful, be funny." You know, and things like that. It's a great tool. And Absolutely. it's really come a long way because it, it used to not be very good, but they've put a lot of work into it. But I'm curious for Clint, if you're having a bad day and you gotta go to a prospect meeting, are you aware of like of like, man, I just don't have it in me today? Yeah. I mean I'm very aware because anger's not easy to hide. Can you And can, that's usually my quickest emotion to go to is anger. So so in that moment, do you risk do you reschedule the meeting? Do you do something to get back on track, you know, before you walk into the office and, and into the boardroom? Because I now let, let's let's be clear about this. A lot of hard work and focus into who I am today. Um old me would have probably blown up a relationship because I would have went in there hot headed. Mm-hmm. Um a little insight. Um I I focus on on the end game. I focus on the task now. It's a lot easier for me to sit in the car for a few minutes, show up early, focus on what you're about to go do, shut shut all that shit down, Absolutely. and go in and do your business and come back out and then scream at the world for whatever reason. Absolutely. So that's through a lot of self-reflection and uh, looking at myself in the mirror and saying, okay, you screwed that up. Was it worth it? Was, was your say, was your how was, successful is that that so the previous program? It, it wasn't. <laughs> but, but look. Yeah. 
to somebody that's un, unaware of who they are and, and what they're doing, they may think it's successful. They may think, ah, F that guy. I don't, I don't need his business. Let's go find another one. That's and a big fat zero for that, it that is. encounter. All oh, right. So, yeah. so if, you're, as if your in game can handle a bunch of zeros across yeah. the board, hey, you're a yeah. lot luckier yeah. than I. But most people can't. So if you are a high D and you let your emotions get to you because some stupid, you know, the water fountain's broken. So you ripped it off the wall <laughs> and threw it out the window. Right. <laughs> Only Clint would do that. I'm, anyway. just, I'm just saying that. Not not again. Yeah, not again. You know, if that's what you had right before a prospect meeting, it's going to be tough to break yourself of that cycle. But what is your end game? Bottle water. And if your end game is winning, right? Yeah. And your end game is winning, and winning is getting this close, and mm-hmm. or or just maybe even the beginning portion of just winning the rapport of this customer, so that next time we can have a meeting. Because I like to talk about small slices, not trying to, you know, eat the whole cake in one meeting. If we're just talking about, hey, this is the first time I'm meeting this customer, I've got to be on my game here. And in order for me to win, I've got to get through this day. If I can task that out and drive towards that task, I can check all of those emotions. So is that really how you do it? Yeah. There, there's not like a go-to like you no, I look scream at, out the window? No, or, look, or, I look, or I look like, at myself in the mirror and, and, and literally say, hey, dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> is this worth it today to blow this shit up? It's not. I love that. That is so incredibly insightful. But say, look, sometimes it sometimes you just don't care. It's that bad and you just say, I'm I'm burning this building down. <laughs> Not literally, he's only kidding. Sometimes. But it, I I think <laughs> I, flares in his hands, I mean, he's waving like what was look like Nicholas Cage. Yeah, Nicholas Hold on. Cage, Hold, on. Right? Hold on. Man, I think, man was on okay, making so a point. Didn't mean to interrupt. The other so if a D's saying that, you know I'm saying that. Mm. I'm thinking why do you, you cannot let your emotions control you? Hmm. You will screw up so but, many things be, be, if you if, let your emotions control you. But I've seen you, I've seen you walk into an office, right? Mm-hmm. And say, God, I'm just having the worst day, right? And so that- To the office? Yeah. Because like you do it as a, as like a rapport trigger, right? I've seen you do this. You've heard me yes. say and it's, to someone, I can't imagine I did that. Well, I it, don't it's not the do first that. thing out of your mouth. Oh, I thought that's what you were saying. It's like the second thing. Right? Like, how, how's your day going? Oh, it's good. Yours? Oh, God, today's been such a struggle. Because you will share that stuff. That And and that's a big key difference between you and Clint. Yeah. Because Clint is not going to share any of that thing because that comes off as weakness in his eyes yeah. to the person he's dealing with. So, so to that point, I want to I wanna say something else. It's not only me looking at myself sometimes. I've surrounded myself with people that make me better. Right. So I surround, maybe it's my friend circle. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a father. Maybe it's a dog guy sitting to your left. Right? Seriously. <laughs> but, but look, Doc Howell sometimes has some great insight to a problem I'm having in life. Yeah. And I get the cool part about this whole thing for me is that I've surrounded myself with an S and I and a C. So I get some really great insight. Um, there is a, I have a confidant of mine that I that knows everything about me. Um, just the other day, I had a, a little issue at work where I was like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to flip. And I was telling him, I just happened to call him and he says, okay, look, man, I'm going to come pick you up. We're going to drive around the block. You're going to get this shit out and then we're going to go to work. I said, cool. And we did that and I got it all out. He took the blunt of it because that's what he does as a friend. And I get that out. So there are who you surround yourself with. That can be huge. Um, Sometimes just bouncing things off of, is this a big deal that I'm even talking about? Is this something that you view as a big deal? And sometimes just talking to you guys, you guys look at me like I'm an idiot for even talking about this as a big deal, but it's so bad in my mind. Hmm. So now I, you know, Clint, one time you said iron sharpens iron. That is so vital in life. You have to have someone to throw something out. Like you said, I, I think that's huge. I mean, it's hard enough to be a salesperson anyway. Yeah. Right. You, and then if you feel, if you think you're the only person alone on the Island, and you can't go talk to anybody else. Like that's just not true. Go get an account. Exactly. Go get an accountability buddy. Yes. And it doesn't necessarily need to be like your sales manager or someone else at your company. Like, like just go find someone. Someone right? you Who's trust and genuine concern about right. seeing you succeed. Right. I, you know, I think it's easy to because every one of us can be a pressure cooker, right? Oh, Where yeah. you know you're bottled up. You've you've had some. You know you've been kicked in the teeth a little bit. Maybe your day or days or weeks or mm-hmm. months haven't been as successful as you'd like. You look left, you look right, you see guys making sales that you think, you know, it's easy to get into that rut of, I'm not very good at this, right? And then you start to get on yourself and get in your own head. And then, you know, you, you, you build the roadblocks yourself, 
You know, you're building your own prison, you know, step by step Absolutely. versus, like you said, reaching out, getting getting some other people to say, yeah, I had that problem or I understand where you're coming from. And it's not that you're looking for a pity party. You got to break that cycle of defeat Absolutely. that you're putting on yourself. Yeah. Uh, and look for someone who's more and successful like than me. you <laughs> to help you, you Your know, pretty face along with the conversation. Uh, goodness gracious. No, so. We're we're about to wrap up. So so Clint, like as the D, talking to other Ds, two to three things that are actionable. You know that that, that someone can use immediately after hearing this in the next meeting they go into around rapport building. Okay, so um, number one thing that's probably going to be the hardest for for me as a D going into a conversation is empathy, um, actual care about the answer. Right. So be. I've I've heard this a bunch of times. I didn't create this. Uh, be interested, not interesting, right? For a D, that's huge. For an I, that's pretty big too. But um, as as you go into that conversation, know that when you ask a question and you're trying to put these people in these quadrants and figure out who they are, there's a reason to why you're asking. Maybe you care, maybe you don't, and that's okay. But your task tells you that you have to ask these questions. Because in order to be successful in the sales process, you have to discover who you're dealing with. So if you if you focus all that on task instead of like Nanette's probably going to say care and I really truly care, you know what? Maybe you do, uh, maybe you don't, and it's okay if you don't. Just put that in a task bubble. Focus on why you're asking these questions, and yeah, you're probably going to have to fake it a little bit. Truly, I you know. You're probably just going to have to say, you know what, I, I really need to ask these questions to figure out who they are, and that's okay. But you have to do it with some tact. You can't just go in there and ask these bullet point questions and fire a gun at everybody and hope they answer truthfully. You can't do that. You have to take a little bit of uh, pages out of the other three quadrants and just say, okay, I'm asking these questions because it gets me closer to my goal. Awesome. Anything else for these? Uh, you're awesome. <laughs> All right, Al. Um, from an eye standpoint, I have it, it, it's, it can be difficult, but if you put your mind to it, use 30 to 50 percent fewer words in your conversations. Whoa. All right. Stop yourself, even though you want to either engage or ask and let them tell you. Oh, is that is that along the lines of the interested versus interesting? I, it, it falls into that category. But you know you're kind of interesting. I mean, because you felt that before. You have that because you're an eye, of course, yeah. right? Because you're like, all right, I, you know, I can roll with this, or sure, that's cool. And you use you know big words, and you're kind of flamboyant mm -hmm. in a manly kind of way, um, <laughs> flamboyant. But at, at at the expense of them not speaking and the process not going forward, mm -hmm. if you're just chatting it up, man, stick to. I'm finished with bonding or poor. Shut it down. Move on to the task of the sales call. Interesting. Okay. Great. Anything else? No. Okay. Nanette? I'm just going to say attitude. I, I think my attitude will make their attitude and be patient. I, I am shocked that an I is talking about fewer words, but I think that's so true. I, I completely concur. You have to have less words. We'll give them your old adage. So, thank you, Dr. Daniel. So, um, the wisest ever says, um, you are a master of your unspoken word and a slave to your spoken word. So, be very careful with your words. You better choose them carefully. And, and I promise you, there is not a single person on earth that would dispute that. I, I've never heard anyone hmm. go. I love that. And challenge accepted. <laughs> um, you just spoke too many words. <laughs> for So for C's, uh, this is my thing. I spent a long time thinking that if I knew all the facts and I knew more than the other person did, you were going to buy from me. And I have found that to be not true so many more times than I can, than I can even count. So trust, which is uncomfortable for a C, right? To, cultivate trust. So while I turn this into a task and I'm trying to figure out who you are so then I can move on with an, with more information than the average person is, I'm also looking at it as this is where that foothold of trust happens, right? Because the more you trust me, the better our 
the rest of our conversation is going to be. It's going to be so much better if we start off with you trusting me because we've done a little bit oh, and I, I'm making sure that like I am, you know, coming across as much as I can, like the person sitting across from me. Right. Cause I, I forget exactly what the, what the exact percentage is, but most of what happens in a relationship happens on a nonverbal level, right? It's uh, cadence and body language and, and tone and things like that. So for me, that's, how I'm trying to figure this out, right? How can I build as much trust as possible before so we get into a situation where, for lack of a better term, it's you versus me and we're trying to get across this thing together. So. I like it. I do too. Thank you. Trust is good. All right, everybody. So this is the episode. So if you got some value out of this or if you know someone who's struggling or let's just say you have someone in your organization who's also a salesperson and you don't know who they are, right? Send this to them. Um, if you struggled with a prospect, um, reach out to us. We might talk about it on the air. Hold on, Al's got something wrong. No, and this is a great, you just brought up a good point. If you're questioning and and you've got a little bit of rapport, throw this at them because then they'll come back and find themselves in this conversation. And maybe it's free. I mean, you know, hey, they come back and tell you who they aligned with Mm -hmm. and, you know, who their superhero was. And and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. And you start another conversation that leads you a little further down the path to whatever success may mean for that relationship. Interesting. All right. Follow us on social media. Everything is at Sales Throwdown. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube and you're enjoying our cups, because they're awesome, um, subscribe. So that way you get notified when new videos come out. And yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Yeah, hashtag your team. Hashtag yeah. Team D. Let's get it in there. Go be amazing, (laughs) Team I. Thanks, y'all. All right. Bye, everybody.